Nicky, very nice uh, meeting you. He's oh, a Johnny okay. Vine fucking Italy. <laughs> <laughs> can I get another coffee? Sorry, mate. Of course you can, mate. Cappuccino, yeah. Being on uh, mainstream radio during the show, you're playing some Italian rap artists and then the new Dua Lipa, which, you know, I can all dig, but when just another rainbow comes in the playlist, it's like, um, like a portal. Almost. For me, you know, it opens up, I feel like I'm on mushrooms, almost, you know, it's like a psychedelic experience. Totally. And it feels like the beginning of a new adventure. But the initial idea came after you joined Liam at uh, Network? Just before at rehearsals, you know what I mean? It wasn't like, we hadn't sat down and gone, right, let's talk about it. It was just like, how have you been? Oh, good, man, nice jacket, we still got it, we all that. And then it was like, fucking, sort of like, you know, it was like, Oh, we are writing some tunes and all that so cool, sort of. You never, I mean, besides, of course, the other network back in the 90s, you never really jammed on material when... Well, we did that. We did the one with the seahorses, the um, Love Me and Leave Me, but it was, that was just fucking about around the house after drinks, you know what I mean? Right. It was never, like, in the studio, you know what I mean? So there's been talk, but never, like, it was never been an official kind of, should we do something? It's just like, should we do no, It's just been, it's just happened. So there was a first batch of songs that made you think, you know, maybe we could turn this into like an album? No, no, it was always, gonna, for me, it was always going to be an album. Like putting out one song would be a bit, a bit cheesy. I wasn't doing anything at the time. Right. So it was like, I'm ready to go, you know what I mean? Like when the songs are ready, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm yeah. Ready to do it. yeah. I was kind of surprised, you know, when I saw the, uh, the title of the second single, Master Liverpool, because I always thought there was a bit of a, a rivalry yeah. between Manchester and, uh, and Liverpool. So I, I thought, you know, maybe they were extending the Olive, olive branch. branch to Liverpool, or maybe it just rhymes better. In this. Yeah, it was, a, it was a toss up Liverpool or Blackpool. I went for Liverpool because <laughs> yeah. I love the Beatles. Of course, of course, yeah. Mars to Manchester is a bit Eminem, isn't it? A bit lumpy. A bit lumpy, <laughs> yeah. A bit, uh, but the Scousers are all right. We get on with them. It's only football, really, that drives a wedge through us, you know what I mean? Right. It's right. only football. Like, I respect all the bands from Liverpool. They're like, of course, yeah. The Beatles and that, even like the new bands, you know what I mean? But. It's only football that sort of right. gets in the way. That's where rock and roll came into the northwest as well, isn't it? Yeah. And the sailors, right. That's right. From the sailors bringing over the, the records, little forty-fives yeah. from right. the state. When I went to Manchester on the first time, I went to see Mr. Uh, Sifter oh, yeah. because of the song. You know, I wanted to see Burning. And for some reason, when we think about these epic bands like Stone Roses or Oasis, we think they come from a mega city. But then when you go to Burning, you know, it looks a lot more where I grew up. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think there's a lot of music lovers in Manchester. And I, I from all the bands and that, that I've been before, and that, like Jeff right. was saying before, and I, obviously Mr. Sifter, his Sifters was just a record store. so. And he was on our doorstep. So oh. if you take him out of it, where the fuck would we have got our records from? You know right. what I mean? So a lot of it goes down to him as well. He was an old fucking you know, old dude who just liked records. Such so a sweet guy. So yeah, if he so. comes out of it, well, you'd have to go in a, you'd have to probably go into Cholton to Busy B Records or whatever it was. And that's huh. a fucking mission, you know what I mean? Or you right. go there anyway. So I think it's just all about the people as well right. that make the, the bands, not necessarily that they're in the bands, you know what I mean? Right. There's a lot of music lovers in that city. Was that your store too, John? No, I, used to, I, I bought a lot of records from uh, going into Manchester. Yeah, Piccadilly, but there was loads of little records. Huh. Yeah, I remember, was it called King Bay, the one in Charlton? That's it, fuck, I need to get it on King Bay in Charlton. <laughs> so where John lived and that, they'd have a, a music little record right. there, and then they'd right. have one in Burnage then. And then you'd probably go through long sight and it'd be fuck all, you know what I mean? Right. So it's just a couple of little places potted up that had some decent tunes. Rock history is full of all these incredible like relationships between, you know, like a guitar player and a singer. You know, they're like so many. I mean, Ozzy and Tony, Iommi, I hear actually a little bit of Black Sabbath wow. in the album. Okay. Mick and Kid, Plant Page. When you guys were kids, which one was the rock couple guitar vocals that really fascinated you as a kid for me it was them ian brown and john right that was like that was the fucking that they were like the dream team man right that was the one where were you jo johnny rotten and steve oh. jones oh steve cool. jones made me want to play the guitar ah oh. right I, I know down to the moment as well it was the last note before the vocal on god save the queen it's a low bent note wow. God save the queen. 
yeah. wow, what the fuck was that? And how do I make that noise? That's when I wanted a guitar. And not long after that, I was playing three, wow. three blind mice on then string. Have you seen the Pistols perform? No. No. Uh, I've seen him at Finsby Park, but it was... Oh, it with was the a, reunion? It was yeah. with Matlock and all that, but it was, it was great and that. But, I thought it was fun, yeah, they came to Italy too. It was with Iggy Pop and that, yeah, Iggy Pop played as well, I think. I guess, yeah. But i seen Iggy Pop recently and he blew my mind. Yeah, he's amazing. Unbe right? yeah. Unbelievable, he had like a, a brass section, just huh. two drummer, bass, the fucking, they were loud, man. I know. And they had this little fucking two-piece, like, trumpet fucking dude. It sounded like fucking, it sounded like Elvis. But yeah. Punk rock. It was fucking mind-blowing. I hear you're rehearsing with, like, um, sort of like a the classic rock quartet with just bass, guitar, drums, and Liam. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe keys as well. I think we need. I've never been in a four-piece before, so I'm looking forward to it. Right. Just one guitar, right? Yeah, even yeah. old John's all over the shop and all yeah. that, but it's not, it, well, it'd, be, it'd be nice to, I don't think I've ever heard a fucking bass in right. my life, because it's just <laughs> fucking, it's just guitars full on, you know what I mean? So, Everybody's got to be on bass, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a psychedelic nature and hypnotic nature in the album. 100%. In the last few years, people talk a lot about mindfulness and meditation. And being in the present, I was going to ask you if you think that uh, listening to or crafting this type of rock songs could be a valid uh, alternative. Well, I've tried both and actual meditation is very different and to working meditation. Right. I used to think, because my wife does a bit of meditation, I used to think I don't need that shit because I write songs and I paint, you know, that's my, my right. meditation. But I tried TM recently and uh, that that works have you tried it i i keep trying it but then i go back to listening to hypnotic uh, <laughs> rock music you know it seems like there isn't i don't have the time i think have you really got 20 minutes twice a day to sit down and do that and nothing else but after i've done it i can think more clearly i can right organize myself feel happier um yeah, I recommend it. Do you do any of those? Oh, I wish, man. I tried it once. I can't. Yeah. I can't focus. But I feel I can. I sit and think a lot. You know what I mean? I can sit in a room on my own and just fucking think about niche. I'm like a goldfish. Please so don't. I'm happy with that. But I've tried it once with the meditation, yeah. and it's. I just fuck it. You don't even have to sit still. Yeah. You can get up and answer the door. Get say hi to the postman and go back to it. Oh, right. oh. But if your mind wanders, that's okay. You shouldn't judge the meditation because whatever happens is doing you good. I was also wondering uh, if your kids loved the new album, if you, while you were making it, you were like, hey, listen to... Mine do, mine are sort of like getting into the guitar music now, and they're both in right. bands and all that type of stuff. They're obviously, okay, now Dad Squire's sick, all that <laughs> stuff, you know what I mean? I was like, absolutely sick. <laughs> Right. He's well, he was fucking well last time. I was like, no, we're not going out. His guitar's fat and all that, so they're they're they're, they're goofing out over it. So I put, as well as the songs and all that, and they're really excited about it. And I can't wait to come with the kids. Right. What about your uh, kids, John? Uh, well, one of my daughters was in the studio for some of the on the making. Um, yeah, she plays a piano chord on. Uh, on this album? That we flip backwards. Yeah, it's at the end, of, towards the end of uh, Just Another Rainbow. Oh, that's beautiful. It's yeah. reversed. Yeah. Like, I didn't know oh. that. I'm going to keep an eye out for that. And she did here. some hand clapping with all of us as well. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. But my youngest son hates it. Really? Yeah. What is he into? Uh, Eminem. It's a bit harsh when something I put that much time and passion into <laughs> comes on. And in the car, and he goes, not this again. <laughs> and reaches over. I was going to ask you about California, too. That's another big epicenter, like a rock capital in the world. Yeah, but the main reason we went was to work with Greg. And another reason, he's doing it in England. He's fucking nosy parkers, man, you know what I mean? Right. They've, been, they've been reviewed and fucking, you know, wherever. The sun. It'd have right. been everywhere, those of dicks in the, you know what I mean? Like so this Greg's got his own studio, so we go there, you know, Oasis ain't that big out there, I don't think you know what I mean, like Right. You feel like, like you have your privacy. Yeah, there was no yeah, there was no yeah, and a bit of something there was like there was no 
Well, you're in the studio doing your thing, whereas in England, it would have been all... So you're coming to Italy, right? Uh, what's your favorite dish, you know, whenever you, you know, get back to it? I know you come here, uh, you come to Italy a lot. Yeah. Spaghetti bolognese for me, man. Always. <laughs> I, you know, no, no, I don't think I've ever had a fucking pizza in Italy. You yeah. never had pizza? I don't think so, no. Oh! But I'll tell you what I did have last time in Milan, I had this uh, risotto. Oh. I, fuck oh. it, it was mind-boggling. Yeah, that stuff's great. Yeah, it was like really like, Oh, it yeah. was naughty, you know what I mean? It was yeah. Like, make it with bone marrow, don't you? Oh, right. Yeah, that's the thing in Milan. Saffron. Yeah. Yeah, Saffron that's and bone yeah. marrow. Yeah, that's yeah, a risotto yeah. milanese. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. So that's that's, that's going to be it, right, when you come to Fabric. Yeah, 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 that's that's I'll definitely try that. I remember uh, coming too early with the roses and the label took us to uh, a, a fancy restaurant. Well, the, there were olives that were in some, like, a breadcrumbs or something. They were big. Like hmm. the size of an egg, but with an olive inside. They were oh, really oh. Tasty. I think you're talking about olive ascolane. They're olives, really, but like fried and with something inside. Maybe yes. there's so many things, you know. Like. Uh, so you're lucky. You know what you're doing with the food, man. It's bang on. <laughs> Love it. Thank you guys so much. Can't wait to see the show yeah, in uh, man, it's gonna April. Be, it's right? going to be intense. I know. I know. Grand. So, so good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks so much.